Hey folks, it's Fritkar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Boulder Canyon. I'm just going to clean up the sheep, because quite frankly, they've gotten a little bit messy here. They're making a terrible mess all over the place, and I don't approve. I don't approve at all. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do was, just want to have a quick look in here and see what the price of wool is at the moment. It's 1019 so it is worth getting a pallet and selling it if we can get said pallet and sell it. So I want to go back here and I want to get that rear weight on. There, like that, back up. Right, we grab you and then we'll come over here and we will get that front fork on and we will, if I can get the thing on, there we go. Right, we grab that one there. Just pick that one up a little bit like that and we will just scoop up the grass and then we will see about selling one of those pallets there because one of them is full only one but that one is enough um well if we, if we have a look over here yes yeah, see it is completely full 10,000 liters that is the global um mod thingy-majiggy but yeah we, we got one right there I'm, I'm quite pleased with that one right there so if i go over to here and just lower that one down like that. There we go. Right. Grab all that lot. We got quite the forkful, actually. There's quite a quite a bit in there. How much have we got in the way of grass in for these animals anyway? Let's have a look. Go in there. Uh, grass, hay, 19,000 litres. They're all right at the moment. We don't need to worry about them at the moment. We're down to 17 hours on the reproduction rate. We've got 60 sheep in here. It's 80 sheep for a full pen, so we are very soon going to be wanting a new sheep pen. We're going to be wanting uh, somewhere new to put the sheep, and that new place is going to be over there. It's going to be the other side of that stone. We're going to expand out that way, so we're going to need to put some tracks down, and we're going to need to clear some trees out of the way, and all things like that in order to be able to do it. Now, we've got some money, and clearing the trees, obviously, is going to generate us a nice bit of extra income as well. Just lower that one down there. We're going to need to get a combine to be able to harvest the grain from our new field when we start growing grain up there. But what we're also going to want is somewhere to store the grain. I mean, yes, we could sell it straight off the field, but that's really not the best way to do it. And I'm wanting to sell grain by the trailer load. Um, you know, it, sort of the, the way that we were going to do it was I was going to sell when we've got a full trailer. But as a sort of an extra little bit with selling the grain by the trailer load, it wasn't going to be that I could just sell a trailer load and then anything extra. It would have to be a trailer load, like nothing else. I can't go and sell one and a little bit trailer loads. I've got to have a full trailer each time I want to sell something. And I can't go and do part trailer loads. It's got to be simply a full trailer and uh, nothing else. So if I've got two trailer loads, yep, yeah, by all means, I can sell two trailer loads. But if I've not got that much, then too bad. We might have to sort of specify what a full trailer load is, though. Because obviously, like... A trader coming up from down the bottom, down the valley, is um, probably going to have different size trailers than what I've got. Because obviously we're, we're not going to be the ones bringing it out. And I'm actually going to go up this way because I got that. Uh, I moved the pallets over a little bit too far. So I'm just going to use this pallet here to shunt them all along a little bit. I'm hoping that will work out quite well there. There we go. And come up to this side, see, and then I can just shunt them away. He probably would have been alright anyway, but we're going to do it like this. I'm going to nudge you up there, like that. Yeah, it's a little bit messy, but um, I'm sure it'll be fine there. So we've got that one unloaded, and we've sold one full pallet for another $10,000, which is good. There's some more money. Um, but yeah, we're going to need storage for grain, and then... We're going to, I mean, what we could say is that a, a minimum of one trailer load and then not worry about it too much. I mean, I think really I do worry about um, some of these things a little bit too much. Um, and I should instead just focus on playing the game a bit more. Um, 
Where's our tractor? Our tractor's way up the top. So rather than um, running all the way up there today, I'm just going to do this today. Just just once. And well, not just once. I do do I do, do it occasionally. I'm 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 quite happy to admit that I do do it occasionally. And we're gonna bring this one over to here. Now I do want to get the shrubs around the edge. I'm not so worried about the rest of it. Like if we happen to leave some little bits of grass along the edge, that's fine, but I definitely want to get the shrubs right on the edges of the field. Those are the bits that really bug me. Right, those are the bits that really, really bug me. But little bits of grass on the edge, I'm actually all right with leaving some of those behind. And it's a good job, really, because I do leave some of them behind in places. And I think that's all right. You know, having a little bit of a verge is fine. I, d I don't think that um, detracts from anything. And once I've done around the edge, I'm going to do twice around the edge. I will actually do twice. I'm going to stop there. I'm not going to go any further than that really should lift this thing out of the ground. Uh, because of the road sign there, I'm sort of going to bring it in this way. Let's let's lift this out of the ground properly. The reason I'm leaving it in the ground is just so that it doesn't um, like go back behind us too far. Although, when you're reversing, it doesn't do anything, does it? There. And I bring that down like that so that we're not kind of... We're not interfering with that road sign there. And... Keep running up through here. So if I do twice around the edge, that's going to ensure that we've got plenty of space for, um, like, uh, when, when we come up to the edge of the headland and things like that. And we're not going to overlap and accidentally go out onto the road. The one thing about this map is that we do seem to have, considering that we're in the middle of nowhere, we do seem to have rather a lot of road signs along the edges of all these old tracks. And that does surprise me. I'm not really sure if... That would be, um, like, uh, well, I, see, this this is in the United States, and I've got no clue what it's like there. W would this be accurate? Would you have a load of road signs in? Because this is, like, a, a very remote place, isn't it? It's it's all dirt tracks up here. There's no tarmac roads. I think you call them asphalt um, roads. We call it tarmac. Um, but th th there's no such roads here anywhere, is there? The, 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 none of them at all. And all you got is just dirt tracks everywhere. It's a very remote, cut-off sort of place. Very remote area. So, sort of having, to my mind, having all these road signs everywhere on these dirt tracks, it, it doesn't seem particularly realistic. But I mean, maybe it is. Maybe it is. Maybe, maybe that is something that would actually be here. And I've got, uh, I've got this slightly wrong. So we'll get our second pass along the bottom here. Going up the hill is not quite so important. We're going to have to do a new run with our, um, what do you call thingy here? The GPS position, the global positioning system, the GPS, and so that we can run up and down the field. And I'm actually going to set that run. Oh, wait. Is it going to do? No, I, I need to set it now anyway, because I'm in a new, um, sort of, I've, I've opened the game again. So if I move over this way a little bit, and I'll set it on this side, like this, here. And I'll sort of start there. I just want to go Control S, make sure we got snap terrain angle on, and then I lower that one into the ground and start it like that. And then I go Alt E. Oh no, I need to be going forward. There, Alt E. You got to be going forward in order to be able to make this work. Um, I have noticed that if I go backwards first, it doesn't actually like it at all. It gets all confused and confuddled. So then I go there and I go Alt E, and for some reason it's gone and set it all super wide. So I will auto width that again of 3.78 according to that one. I don't know if that's right or not, but um, we'll go with that. So there we've got 3.78. If I have a look, actually, let's just go into the garage in here. And my plow right there is a. Wait, what? According to this, is 5.3 meters wide. That's not 5. Point Wait a minute. I wonder if that is what was causing us some of the problems previously. Because that says 5.3 meters wide. Right, you got two of them here. You got... They're both the same. They're both the same, but one is saying 5.3 meters, but it's not 5.3 meters at all. That, that's not 5.3 meters. 
But anyway, uh, let's 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 not worry about that. We got the one that we got. It's um, three point something meters, and um, how we've got it at the moment seems to be working just fine. So we'll stick we'll stick with that. We're we're quite happy with that. We can run with that. And this is the the outside edge of what we're going to be doing up along here. All we got to do is just whiz up and down this field a few times to finish off all of this, and. Everything will be absolutely wonderful. And we're going to need to plant it. Now, planting is not the problem, right? We've got the planter. We've got the cultivator. We don't have a sprayer. So that we can't deal with weeds. Um, but it's the combine. The combine is the expensive part. However, I am confident that we could get enough money from selling trees while we're busy digging out, uh, you know, cutting down trees for the next sheep pen. I'm confident that we could get enough space for it. I'm, I'm quite confident that we could do that. And it looks like we got almost exactly the right distance coming up through there when I came round the rock. Because I, I sort of um, manually guessed that. You know what? I'm going to lift that one out of the ground. Because reversing with it in the ground is probably not very realistic. But reversing whilst turning a sharp corner, that's definitely not realistic. That's definitely not what we want to be doing. Um... Turning a co any kind of corner, you wouldn't be turning much of a corner with this one. No, no, no. Well, gentle curves. You could get away with gentle curves with this, but not much more than that. Uh, sharp corners, that wouldn't happen. You, you just wouldn't be able to do it. The, the machine would... You, you'd snap something. Something would break. There'd be an almighty clang behind you. And that would be something breaking. The thingamajig breaking off the hooser, we call it. And then the Watsmanot would no longer be able to do its uh, thingamajigs. Right? So it's, it's all very technical terminology. Um, don't, don't worry about it if you don't understand it. It's, it's, it's very, very technical stuff. The, the Whosmacolits and the Watsmajigs, um, it, it takes years to be able to fully understand the Watsmajigs. Um, so, yeah, don't, don't worry about it. If you don't fully understand it, it's okay. Lesser people have tried and failed to fully understand what goes on with the Who's Me Calls It. Um, me among them, I, I haven't got a clue. I, ha I, ha I just haven't got a clue. And I, I've, I've studied them for years and I still don't fully understand what goes on with them. <laughs> okay, anyway, en enough of that nonsense. Enough nonsense. Um, we will finish ploughing out this bit. So we've got a straight line running up across the field over there and then there's a little bit of a dog leg shape to it over this side but I'm I'm actually quite happy with how this field is going to work out slightly triangular in shape and um, but generally it's just sort of a long thin field and then as we expand outwards I'm kind of thinking that this field we will work along the slope over there because I know at the moment is it's better suited I think to working up and down the hill um, it's the, the hill isn't overly steep it's a little bit steep, admittedly, but it's not particularly, it's, it's not anything that's going to cause us any problems. I'm going to do a third pass here, and I'll probably do a third pass along the top end as well. And then, I think that should be, well, actually, no, I think twice would be enough. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't think that this slope is too steep to be working sideways on. I think it's going to be absolutely fine. So we can have a fairly long field running along here. We clear out some more trees. And then the bit north of the rock, that we won't be doing anything with. Um, that will be where animal pens go. We'll, we'll be putting cattle up there eventually. Sheep can stay down this side where we are. Let me go to here and engage that one. Lower it down. Right, I'm pressing number three. So the hired help will... Well... The GPS will go, but if it sees anything that it thinks is slightly out of place, it stops immediately. It doesn't go any further than that. Um, yeah, see what I mean? Slightly out of place, and it stops immediately. You, you've got to, you've got to manually keep it going. You can't put the cruise control going when you've got the GPS half the time. It just decides to stop. I mean, if it was slightly wider, if the plow was slightly wider, we'd probably get away with it. It'd probably be all right. But as it is at the moment, no, I don't think it's going to work. Um, so yeah, anyway. Oh, wait a minute. I'm quite a long way out on that. I'm much further out than I thought I was. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to redefine the outside edge of the field, and then I'm going to go north of the boulder, and I'm going to redefine that as well. So I'm going to come down here. 
like this. I'm actually going to turn off the allow create fields for just a second. Just in case I do anything wrong down here. And I'm going to bring that back over to there. So it's right here that I want to go. And the other thing is I should probably start planting grass in that field now before I go any further. So I'm going to stop there. I'm just going to take off that bit. And I'm going to switch back over to our track. I see I was going to do it with that one, but I don't need to. I can use the loader tractor, can't I? So I'll use the loader tractor to do this. It's a bigger tractor. He should be able to pull it better. And we will unhitch that one there. I know I did say originally that I was only going to be um, tabbing between machines when I'm using hired help. But let's be honest. Um, running backwards and forwards over long distances is extremely tedious gameplay. So I'm hoping that you'll forgive me for tabbing between the machines. Because... Um, quite frankly that there are some bits that I've sort of with I know that I'm doing a hardcore series but there are some bits that just seem to be unnecessarily tedious that we'll be kind of just creating tedium for ourselves when we don't actually need to and so for that reason I feel that uh, not abiding by every rule that we have set ourselves and and just tweaking them as we go along a little bit to avoid some of the absolute worst of the tedium would be an acceptable thing to do. Now, I do need a little bit of fuel, so I'm going to come over here and put some go-go juice into the tractor. Uh, there we go. I want diesel. You don't need to worry about the engine running while you're filling up with diesel. And, uh, some people will say you should always turn it off because of explosions. No. Diesel, you can drop a lit match into the diesel tank and nothing's going to happen. Right? Literally, nothing will happen if you drop a lit match into a diesel tank. I mean, I'm not telling you to go and drop lit matches into diesel tanks just in case something does happen. Um, but no, it's it, the way that it works, it, you, you're not going to get any issues. Um, what you do need to worry about is um, not dropping lit matches into the diesel tanks. Uh, if you were filling up with petrol and you had petrol or you had petrol nearby, then yes, you absolutely would want to be a lot more careful. I'm not cultivating this because we'd have to nurse the cultivator quite a bit, because otherwise it'd just go off down and cultivate all the rest of the field. So for that reason... Oh, hang on a minute. I'm going to control H, and I'm not going to have the AI vehicle extension for this. I'm just going to go with normal hired help. Um, yeah, for that reason... Um, I, I, I don't worry about it. With um, you know, Diesel doesn't just ignite like that. It, it takes a lot more to get diesel to burn. So you can have your tractor running. If, you, if you've got petrol there, then yeah, you switch the engine off and you'd be a bit more careful because petrol is a lot more explosive. The fumes coming off petrol are much more likely to ignite from um, a simple source of heat. Whereas diesel, the way that diesel engines work is they compress it and it causes the diesel to explode. That's why they're noisy, because that's a series of explosions, whereas petrol is quiet. This is a series of fires. It burns down. Okay, he's going to go on and plant the grass. He's turned around. He's gone the right way. So I'm going to jump off here and let him carry on. And we're going to carry on with doing this up here. So I've got this edge of the field that I want to do over this side. I'll just engage that again. I'll lower that one down like that. There we go. I've got the allow create fields. And I'm quite happy with that corner there. So this one here, we're going to run up through here, and it's just going to widen it tiniest, tiny fraction up this hill on this bit. But then when we get to the other side of the rock, that's going to end up being quite a big chunk over to the side. So I did miscalculate that by quite a long way. I thought I'd done all right with it, but apparently I didn't. We, we've already seen that. Apparently I, I definitely um, got that one slightly wrong. So I'll get to that point there, and then I'll Alt-X and turn that off. And just slowly bring that out round like that. And then I'll come out. And you can see right there, if I go into that line there. That's the wrong one. It's that line there is the edge of the field running down through there. And that's only two across. So I want this one here. 
and this one over here. This is the outside edge of the field. This is the one that I've just travelled along. Along here. Right, right the way over to this side. So I'm just going to engage that one a minute. There, and I'm going to back up again. And I'm going to drop that one down about there, I think. I don't want to go too far over. I think that's going to be about right there. I'm going to come back up again in a minute, and we're just going to tidy this one up just a little bit. Yeah, because um, we're, we're leaving a little strip all the way down through. It's occasionally just breaching across there, but for the most part, we're leaving a strip. So if I run that one up there, that's further over than I thought. I mean, the, the stone is bigger on this end, isn't it? That's, that's partly what it is. Right, let's lift you out of the ground there. And bring you over this way a little bit. Right, it's getting this one to line up now. This this is going to be slightly trickier. I think about there. Seem about right to you. Ooh. That is pretty much spot on. I think we would struggle to do any better than that. And then I'll bring this one back over here. And I'm not going to use the GPS for this bit. It's going to run up through here. I'm very croaky today. Very, very croaky today. Unusually so. Um, I don't have a cold or anything. I just sometimes get quite croaky. Um, and it's, it's something that I've, I've, I've had for quite a long time. Um, I think it's in part related to something that happened to me at an old workplace many, many years ago. Um, it just means that uh, there's not a lot that I can do about it. It just means that I, I, I'm not going to go into it either. But um, basically it just means that some days I end up uh, coughing quite a bit. And the fact that I used to smoke probably doesn't help matters either. So I, I would just say to anybody that does um, smoke, um, it's, it's not a good idea, right? We're not going to encourage smoking. We're absolutely not going to encourage smoking. Quitting smoking was an extremely difficult thing for me to do. It was not an easy thing for me to do, but I did eventually manage to do it. So I would encourage, you know, if, if, I, if I can quit smoking, then anybody can, honestly. Um, so if you do smoke... I would encourage you try whatever options are available to try it and give it up because honestly it's worth it. It, it. it can take quite a bit of work and I'm not going to deny there are days when I do sort of think oh, I really, really fancy a cigarette today and it's been, what has it been? It's been almost 14 years since I stopped smoking and there are still times every now and then it's, i mean it's really really rare now like really obscenely rare hardly ever happens at all but there are times just very very occasionally when i suddenly think oh oh i could really do with a cigarette right about now really really do with one um i don't i absolutely don't i do resist i haven't even taken a drag on a cigarette for 14 years or my, yo actually i think it is 14 years now actually um so, yeah, it is it is possible. I, I do recommend that you, you try and do it if you can because um, it, it, it's, it's definitely worth it. But, I mean, I did ask my doctor and they didn't think that my excessive coughing in the mornings, um, some, see, it's, it's, it doesn't happen every morning. It's some, I mean, and it's not just mornings. It's just like every now and then I just have, a, 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 I do a lot of coughing. And... The doctor didn't think that it was actually anything related to my past smoking because enough time has gone part, gone by that that it should no longer really be any kind of have any kind of impact on it and um, so that particular bit shouldn't really come into it i mean i'm i'm hopeful that he's right uh, doctors usually know what they're talking about so i'm i'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt on that one and i'm just going to Bring that one up to there, and I'm going to stop a second. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through every bit of machinery that I own, apparently. Go over to this one. Right, he missed it. He missed one little tiny bit right there. And you're finished. All right, we've missed one tiny little bit back here. I'm wondering, though, if I should go and plant grass... On our new field up there for the first, you know, just for a first crop. 
Right, if I was to plant grass up there rather than um, planting anything else, we'd at least, you know, we could do a harvest off of it. We could just go through and we could cut all the grass on it and then go back afterwards and, and do something different and go and plant it with some arable crops. Because at the moment, we don't have the combine. And it's the combine that is the, like, the, the big thing. And I've got $45,000 at the moment. Let's just see what is the cheapest combine that we can buy. Go into here. 84000 And then you've also got to get the header to go with it. So the header for said combine is another twenty-seven. So 84 says 91, 111,000 dollars is the cheapest combine that we've got available. Um, mods, I don't have any cheaper mods at the moment. So 111, yeah, 111,000 dollars is the cheapest combine that we have available. I mean, I think that's quite a cool one to start off with, and then we can worry about something bigger. But still, it's 111,000. I've got 45,000 at the moment. So, yeah, $45,000 is great, but am I going to be able to get another $65,000 minimum in order to be able to pay for a new combine and header? Plus, I will also have to buy some grain storage. I have to buy a grain silo. And I will need to buy a... What else will I need to buy? Uh, I've got a trailer. We do have a trailer. We, we've got that covered. And we've got a baler, so we can bale up any straw that we might make. So, I'll need grain storage and I'll need a combine. Right, the cheapest combine is 110,000. Thereabouts, just over. And the grain storage, I think that's like 70 grand, isn't it? So we're looking at another seventy thousand dollars on top of the hundred. So we need two hundred thousand dollars in order to be able to start arable cropping. We need two hundred thousand dollars. So I think that it would be in our best interest to start off doing um, a little bit more grass up here. Uh, it wasn't the original plan. I did actually want to go straight into doing some arable cropping, but um, I mean, I think we we got to look at this a bit sensibly. We we could try doing it like that but then we're very much on a time scale where we have to earn that much money before we can go any further and i've already got people saying that by this point we've earned so much money we ought to be able to renegotiate our loan and at least get lower interest rates um and perhaps continue to spend the same amount of money by repaying some of our loan um and I think you're right. I think that it is time that you know, we, we could start looking at that. So maybe we could start lowering our interest rates and so on and so forth and start repaying a bit of our loan. So if we're going to have to guarantee that we're paying off a set amount of our loan each day, then, you know, what's, what else are we going to be looking at? We're, we need to pay off a set amount of our loan each day. There's more expense going out. Time does tick away, you know, especially when we're loading up timber and things like that. Time runs away from us at a fair speed so we're going to be looking at probably close to 250 maybe approaching 300,000 in order to get fully established and that is without buying a sprayer to come up here and spray the field plus we don't have anything to spread lime with and we've got we, you know we'd have to buy lime and a, a lime spreader as well um, so there's another yield hit that we would be taking all of these things add up, or all of this it does add up. So I am thinking that to start with, we plant this field here with grass. And then we can use the, the crop of grass that we get off of this field, along with um, cutting down some more trees, to pay for our expansion into arable farming. And we'll be able to get the tools that we need for the trade. And we can also go and get a grain storage bin that we can put down there at the farm so that we can store the grain that we harvest off of our fields. And then the final thing that we're going to want to do is we, we need to take into account the sheep. I want to be able to expand those sheep as soon as they hit 80 sheep, because 80 is the maximum that goes into that pen. Um, as soon as we reach 80 sheep, preferably at 79 sheep, you know, just so that we don't have any time where we're not producing additional sheep. I want them to be able to move into something, into another pen. And moving into another pen, then 
our sheep population will keep growing. We're not going to have to go and spend much more money, but we do need to buy the pen for the sheep, and that's going to cost quite a bit of money. So there's more trees that need to be taken down so that we can make room for it, and so on and so forth. You get the idea. So we've got quite a lot of expenses coming up, so, and I think with all of that in mind, it definitely would pay to do this as grass to start with. So if we, if we go grass here first, then after we've done grass here, uh, we're then able to... Wait, 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 wait. Right, bring you back. Um, after the grass has been done here once, maybe twice, we're then in a position that we can start ploughing it up again. And, uh, well, see, we only need to go over it with the cultivator. Even if we don't bother the plow, and we can plow it, we've got the plow right here, we just put the hired help going, and they can plow the field up for us. They'd be very good at doing that. They can plow it all up, and then we can carry on and um, plant it all with wheat or canola. Or, well, we, we do wheat to start with, I think. Wheat or barley, prob probably, maybe oats, but something like that, so that, we've so that we've got some straw on the ground. And then we can go and bale up the straw. We'll have straw bales that we can pick up, and we can sell those along with um, silage that we will hopefully be able to get off of the bottom field down there. And we'll be, able to make, we'll be able to make a fortune. I'm hoping that we can turn this field up here into a, an absolute fortune. We'll, we'll be able to make a big pile of money off of all of it. But anyway, I have run out of time for today's episode. So if you've enjoyed the episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.